Now, the decision to undertake a nationwide women's charter was taken during the women's parliament held in August last year and calls for a society where women are free from discrimination and prejudice. The provincial review sessions will take stock of progress made in implementing the articles of the women's charter. Joining me to expand on this is Sylvia Lucas, the deputy chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. Very good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your time. Talk us through exactly what this charter is about and what it entails. Good morning, uh, and good morning to the viewers. The, the women's chapter what, is what we can call a document of intent. That during 1994, the women of South Africa in the women's coalition, they came together and they developed some articles on which they thought that the women's agenda should be uh, accommodated. And when they handed it over to Madiba on the 9th of August 1994, it also formed the backdrop backdrop of what is today our Women's Day and what is celebrated as we as this was a this charter was actually uh, the women uh, came to this charter through consult through consultation and through research proper research to see what is most of the areas that is very important for women and they came up with uh, 12 articles around issues like education around issues like equality around issues like the judiciary law and uh, crime, and there is quite uh, areas that have been covered within this women's charter. But when we, we looked in, uh, in the, the 2019, we realized that there, not once in this 25 years there was a review or an assessment as to how far the government got with regards to making sure that they develop legislation or policy for that matter to make sure that the women's charter is or the articles of the women's charter is being responded to. We must say in our uh, review sessions, we have realized that quite a few areas have been covered, but we still, women are still left behind. Women are still those that are the poorest. They are still those that are the most unemployed. They are still those that are the most unequal, but they are still those that are the ones, most of the women are the ones that don't at any given time, they have money or means to provide for themselves and for their children. And that is, that is some of the findings. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the spirit of this, of this women's charter was, was to make sure that the government understand that there are issues around women that should be accommodated within the democratic dispensation. And that is what the women's charter tried to achieve. You speak about the importance of the women's agenda being escalated, but uh, as we look at the systemic weaknesses that continue to impede the advancement and realization of gender equality in South Africa, how will this document um, assist in that regard? The, the, the only issue, and I, and I repeat what I said before, the Women's Charter was a document of intent, which means it is providing uh, proposals as to what we do. To implement this, the need to develop policy, there is a need to develop legislation. Now, if we look into the legislative framework, yes, indeed, there is quite a, a few areas where legislation is covering the women's agenda. There is a few areas where policy is covering the, the women's agenda. Two weaknesses in this implementation of the areas that have been identified. Is and the issue of coordination? Yes, you wanted to? Yes. Uh, what are some of these key policies and legislation that have been enacted since this uh, uh, adoption of, of the Charter? Let, let me start by, I'm sure you have, you have uh, taken note of the fact that yesterday we had a law reform uh, mm -hmm. kind of summit. And uh, the, 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 the idea with the summit is to look exactly into what is the existing legislation and what is it that we do, that we were doing and that we were not doing to ensure that this legislation worked for me. Now, I want to put something categorically. In most of the areas, when we start to discuss the women's issues, we, uh, people will bring up the issue of gender-based violence yes. first and foremost, or let me say domestic violence. So that is why, in that realization, we thought that let us look into the, 
the legislative framework and see what is there really comprehensively that is responding to the women's agenda. And I must say, it was just so wonderful when uh, the, the speakers was there, uh, that was there, including the Gender Commission, including the Law Reform Commission, including the Finance and Fiscal Commission. The Finance and Fiscal Commission, first and foremost, there are two uh, 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 legislation at the local government level that is existing and that is trying to address the issues, but that need to be reviewed and strengthened. And that is the mm -hmm. Fiscal Powers Act of, 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 of the Municipal Fiscal Powers Act, and that is the Municipal Finance uh, MFMA. Yes. That is the other act. That is. Is, Just is, if, if you'll allow me to interrupt you for, for the sake of time, um, excuse me, um, Honorable uh, Sylvia Lucas, but uh, a lot of uh, activists, a lot of uh, gender-based violence groups have spoken about the hiccup being implementation, that there's a lot of uh, paperwork in the background, there's a lot of conversations about what should be done, but a lack of implementation. As we look at um, the benefits of this charter, you know, when will it be put into implementation and how will it change the lives of women who are suffering under uh, abuses and lack of employment and, of course, gender-based violence being um, the, the main one that has really come out very strongly, especially during the lockdown period? Yes, for sure. The issue of gender-based violence really came out very strong. But I think we need more time to sit down and to see there is a plethora of, of, of legislation that is contributing to the, uh, to, the, to the fact that women are being suppressed and oppressed. Like, for instance, one that we have never really, not that we have never thought about it, because currently we are in the, in the amendment, busy with the amendment of that specific legislation. And I want to mention it here, it's the Customary Marriage Act, where the women are so much oppressed and suppressed because so many women doesn't know what is their rights and their uh, entitlements within a customary a marriage. And whenever we are speaking about gender-based violence, already the three, uh, the, the three legislation that is, that is existing is being uh, reviewed because it is, it is quite a buzzword. And like you said, during the lockdown period, in, in actual fact, it escalated. But there are so many other uh, legislation that is existing that is supposed to be addressing discrimination against women. And it is not really uh, highlighted enough. And that is some of the things. The Maintenance Act, for instance, that is being reviewed uh, because so many uh, men are getting away with not uh, maintaining their children and not supporting their spouses whenever there is a, 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 a divorce. Another issue that came up is the issue of, of widows that are getting a spouse, spousal pensions and the issue of the taxation of that spousal pension, how it is impoverishing women more and more. And that is why I'm saying our focus is mostly to make sure that we have got equity and equality, but mm -hmm. also that we empower women to be able to stand for themselves so that they are not really uh, abused and they are not becoming victims of gender-based violence. That is the issues that we, that we want to address. But how far are we to making sure that we address the issue of equality, gender equality, so that women should be more equal, so that they should be able to, to, to provide for themselves, and so that they should be able to, to, to can walk out of any abusive relationship. That is important. Mm -hmm. But the issue that we have found is that, particularly at the local level, you don't really have gender aggregated data to make sure that you understand where are these women, where are these people, and what is being done to, um, to improve their circumstances so that they can be able to provide for themselves, so that they can be able to walk out of abusive relationships. So society will have to do more. The family will have to do more. Together with government and together with parliament, is an oversight board. If all of us can work together, mm -hmm. I'm sure that we will be able to respond to the, to the plight of our people and of our women in South Africa. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Sylvia Lucas, the Deputy Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces. For